Hi, this is Brandon Smelly from Thirst Gym here in Tart, Indiana. Today we're talking about how to properly set up chains specifically for the bench press. This is something we see commonly botched in the fitness industry, just setting up chains in general, but definitely the bench press. So we're going to talk about how you properly set up chains, why you would do so, and how accommodating your resistance really works in terms of the bench press. So if you've got your bar in your rack, um, you're going to look at the sleeve aspect of it. I'll mention that when you're warming up and if you're going to use chains, put your chains on the barbell first as you continue to warm up. That way you're getting used to the accommodating resistance because there's nothing like saying, oh, I bench 315 and then you throw the chains on and then you get stapled. So that way you could work up appropriately and still be able to have a good judgment of where your top sets or where your working sets for the day particularly would be. So the common issue we see with chains First of all, people don't get the right chain, so you want 5 8 chain, you don't want the chains that you're going to go get at your like local Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that that's very, very tiny and thin. You want big 5 8 chain. <clears throat> the fitness industry unfortunately has some where they make these holders that go on the bar and then the chain hangs straight down like this. So if we have a bench presser and let's say he bench presses 300 pounds and he's got uh, 275 on the bar. Each one of these chain lengths is approximately two-thirds to three-quarters of a pound. So for easy math, we just say three lengths, every four lengths, we're going to get three pounds. Okay? So if we've got down here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen chains to make it easy, we'll say fifteen chains, um, we got approximately ten, eleven pounds on the barbell, okay, because it's on the floor. Then when they go down, we're going to go down to maybe five chains off on just the barbell. So then we're going to go, okay, maybe two pounds, three pounds, whatever it is, and then back up to five pounds. That's just on one side, so we're looking from four to, you know, maybe six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounds at the most. That's not very much change in resistance given what the athlete is doing in terms of the bench press, okay? A, a two, essentially four to to basically 10 to 12 pound change of weight is not a huge training effect for accommodating resistance. That's not really what accommodating resistance is really about. This is basically just saying, hey, I'm putting chains on my barbell, look at me, and that's not what it's for, okay? What you want with your 5H chain, you want to have some kind of giant carabiner in the middle. So now you see I've got my chains basically divided in half, right? Then what you need is some kind of feeder chain, feeder system. We've got two different types of easy loaders here that we use for the bench press, okay? We've got one that is longer, which is pretty, pretty nice. All you're going to do with this is you're going to take one ring hole, put it around the bar. This one's got separate rings. So for the bench press, you're only going to put it at the top. Then as you see down here, we've got multiple chain links down here at the bottom. Now we're doubled up. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we have 16 links, okay? So when we change through a range of motion, we're gonna get more of a training effect. The same thing with the smaller one. If we take the smaller one, you can do the same thing with the bench press because the bench press isn't as much range of motion as say a squat or a deadlift. You can hook it in the bottom ring here. And then we're gonna get about the same thing. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, again, eight lengths off the ground for one side, that makes 16, that'd be a total of 30, 32 on both sides. Then you could do your math of how much weight that would be. So somebody like of, of my strength, I generally put two of these chain links on each side. So I have a total of, each one of these is basically 21 pounds. So I basically have a total of 84 divided by in half. So then that's 40 some. Then I have 40 pounds of chain resistance at the top and down to next to zero at the bottom, okay? Why would we do this? Why is this important for a training effect? Two main reasons. Number one, it adapts to the strength curve of the exercise. So if you bench press or you watch somebody bench press, the hardest part of the bench press is right here off the chest. It's where you're the least advantageous in the exercise to be able to produce the most amount of force. It's the hardest biomechanical position to bench press from. The nice thing about this is, is that as we go down, we get less and less weight theoretically on the bar because the chains are deloading into the ground. It's going to come down. It's going to help build confidence in our athletes as they press. Not only is it going to get harder, we're going to build that strength curve up. 
and we're going to be able to handle more load at the top. So it's a mental aspect, but also from a training aspect, we're training the strong range of motion that generally gets neglected. Because if you're only 300 pounds strong on the chest and you're 325 strong at the top, that means you're going to be limited by 300 pounds at the chest, <clears throat> where theoretically we can actually get you to train that 325 at the top, which will build your triceps, your speed, your strength, all sorts of different aspects of the bench press in this example. But again, like I said, we can use this for different lifts as well. The under, other benefit to the chains is that unlike bands, they do not have what's called an overspeed eccentric. So bands are physically yanking the bar down to the ground or to the earth. Chains do not have a pull effect, okay? They merely deload into the ground, and then as you press more off, more technically up in the bench press, for example, more chains are coming off the ground, so therefore it gets harder. So this is a great way to help teach an athlete to get some overload and build confidence. You also get some stability component value because as you unrack it, the chains are gonna move a little bit, and that's gonna have to force the athlete to stay in control of the weight and the barbell throughout the range of motion. So if you see anybody that's setting up chains in a fashion like this, one straight line from the barbell down, they have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea what accommodating resistance and chains are really for from a training aspect. They're merely wanting you to look at them while they bench press. Do yourself a favor, go buy some easy loaders, buy the right chains, buy the right carabiner, set it up correctly, and actually benefit a training aspect from the way you're gonna use the accommodating resistance for the bench press specifically. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Have a great day.